little bit better. <laughs> anyway, everyone, this is St. Pam again. Tonight, I am going to discuss uh, the plans for the Baines and Boone system, kind of from a role player's perspective. Um, so, uh, I really just want to give my initial thoughts on it, which I honestly think is pretty awesome. Um, the reason I think it's so awesome is because we're not stuck with just one racial stat that the devs think is appropriate. We get to choose what will better fit our character. S uh, since choices do matter pretty heavily in this game, the Banes and Boons should have a pretty good impact on that. So I'm really looking forward to it. What I've opted to do, since we're looking at this from my perspective as a role player, is I'm going to take a look at the Banes and Boons based on the gargoyle that I am going to create. I'm assuming that she'll be a bard. Yes, I know the class has not been confirmed, but until it's stated that we won't get one, I'm going off the concept art that depicts them. You can see that art in the slideshow here. I'm also going to assume for the moment that their abilities are magical in nature. So if that changes down the road, then what I choose would likely change as well. So I'm going to go in order of the uh, different sections for the boons. I'm going to start off with the golem specific ones. Um, so I'll do the golem specific boon and then I'll do the golem specific Bane and go in that like that. Um, a lot of the boons I know I'm not going to be able to use or take all at once. These are just the ones that I thought were most interesting and most fit the character and even if I can't um, actually take the boon it may be something that still affects them in an RP sense. Alright so the first on uh, the list for the golems is uh, interesting for that I think would be interesting for my character would be the never slaves again uh, which increases your resistance to mind magic uh, I also like sorceress savant which increases the rate of proficiency gained with spells this is assuming again that bards use magic with their playing um, my bar, uh, my gargoyle is, in my mind, a fairly competent musician, and since gargoyles have something of an obsession with sound, it would make sense that her abilities may be a bit stronger than others. Um, for the golem specific banes, I like the uh, can't fight forever which reduces your maximum stamina and I also like that uh, I also think that born in darkness would be appropriate this one reduces your vision during the daytime the can't fight forever is because I don't really see her as being much of a fighter she is a musician and she spends the majority of her time studying her music rather than engaging in battle so it would make sense that she would not have as much stamina uh, while fighting that a warrior would have um, the born in darkness is because I think of her as being something of a night owl and therefore she may be more sensitive to sunlight so that's pretty simple um, There are also, sorry, we dropped something. Mm -hmm. right, sorry about that. Um, again, there are also Arthurian specific boons that I like the looks of as well. So let's take a look at those and see how those line up with my perception of the bard that I want to play. Uh, since I think she would spend a great deal of time studying, I like the sound of intensive study for her. This one increases your attunement. 
Now, simply because she is a gargoyle and therefore has stone skin, I also like built to last. This increases your armor penetration defense. It would make sense that it would be harder to stab someone with stone skin than someone who doesn't have stone skin. So that's why I went with that. Um, the Arthurian Banes here are, uh, they were a bit more difficult. Some of these would be really dependent on how the character actually turns out. Um, I'm going to go with the ones that I think at the moment are the most fitting. So the one that I feel is really the most fitting um, at this point is Creeping Despair, which causes you to suffer additional panic for each ally that dies near you. I could see this because she seems to be a really nice, caring character thus far, which means that she would take the death of anyone that she perceives to be her friend hard to say the least. I also think I might like the pacifist, which means you cannot equip weapons or use abilities which cause damage to enemies. However, I'm a little torn here. I don't really think she's a pacifist. I just think that she prefers not to fight if she doesn't have to. So rather than that, I would probably have to go with held back by honor. Um, this means that you do not gain a bonus if someone, uh, if you hit someone from behind. I don't think she would attack someone that wasn't looking or didn't know she was there. And, uh, Zero has said it would be interesting to see them give incentives for picking really goofy banes. I can definitely um, uh, see where that could be a good thing. I hadn't seen any that I thought were super goofy myself. Um, there is one on there that's listed as a mystery and the description states that no one knows what it does. I'm really, really curious about that. And maybe there would be an incentive for taking that one since it doesn't really... Uh, well, that's a boon, though. It's not a bane. So I'm really curious what that one does. Um, I was actually going to talk about that one later, though. But that's okay. Thank you so much. You might be willing to pick the mystery one. It's interesting. I'm wondering if it's just like it can do a random thing and you just take your chances with it. Kind of like the mystery flavors where you have to figure out what what it actually is yeah I I may try that one out just because it is mysterious <laughs> hey maybe they'll come up with a uh, mystery Bane later on oh yeah as uh, Sornan has said the sickly uh, Bane each day in game you have a chance of being afflicted with an incurable disease for the day. That could definitely be fun, especially from a role playing perspective. If you're playing a character who does get sick frequently, then hey, why wouldn't you take that bane? So I could see a lot of fun with that one too. Alright, so um 
as you can see I've chosen boons that are beneficial boons and veins that are beneficial and harmful based on what my perception of the character is um, I'm going to also look at the general boons uh, and veins as well however there are a lot more of these keep in mind that there are a lot of options and I may like quite a few of them that I would not be able to choose because of the game mechanics which is just fine it's gonna make the choice hard but hey that's the point even if I can't choose them on the character though I may find some way to RP them not in a way that would affect combat but just in how she acts in character so for the general boons the first one I see right off the bat is quick study this increases the rate that you gain ability proficiencies I think this is fairly obvious and is the same reason I chose one of the Arthurian boons she spends a great deal of time studying her gra craft so she would be able to le learn new songs or abilities or whatever they're called fairly quickly the more the merrier is also a great one this gives you more power per target affected by AOE type abilities since she's a bard I imagine she'll have at least a few songs that inspire or harm more than one person so this would just be icing on the cake <laughs> Uh, Soinen is saying that the min-maxer in him uh, says quick study is not worth it. It only lasts 50 RL hours. Well, you know, maybe it wouldn't be. That's just one of them that I was seeing that seems like it would be fitting for her. But we'll have to see keep in mind that some of these may also change as we get closer to release we are not even an alpha as of yet so there's definitely some time uh, some chances for some of these to change the way they work um, another one that I've seen is Boon Companions this would mean that songs that would normally affect more than one character give you more power when they affect only one that would mean that AOE abilities would still be very viable against a single target it also means that songs that would normally be uh, either inspiring or dread inducing in a character for more than one person may be even more inspiring or terrifying for a single person <laughs> zero says that he didn't see a fear of height banes and that there needs to be one I agree that would actually be a really good uh, general bane there's enough people that are afraid of heights and I could see fighting up on a mountaintop being a deaf a issue uh, so in there is an agoraphobia one uh, you do not you um, I forget which one it is hold on let me go look agoraphobia your abilities are less effective when you are in the great outdoors so there is an agoraphobia one but there is not one for the fear fear of heights yet hopefully there'll be one later on though. that's a good one I would agree um, Perfect pitch, which increases resonance, is a no-brainer for a bard, in my opinion. Uh, this can mean that her songs are a bit higher quality in character because of how much studying she does with her craft. There's a lot of great boons that I like the looks of, so I'm going to stop there and let's take a look and see how those line. Um, and let's take a look at the banes and see how they line up with my perception of the character. Um, yes I definitely saw the one for claustrophobia and that's a fantastic one as well zero I'm glad they are including some of the phobias as boons and banes um, or banes rather 
I'm also glad to see that um, how your character may feel about a particular season can affect uh, you either for good or ill. So that's pretty awesome. I'm sure that's something that um, being as TDD are possibly going to be affected by the seasons anyways. I'm sure that's something that they would enjoy. Um, now again, since I think a uh, she would spend a great deal of time uh, studying, I like the sound of intensive study for her. This one increases your attunement. So again, it's one of those that just comes off as a no-brainer because of how I think of her. And I think I've skipped around here a bit. Yeah, I did. Somehow I got mixed up and got, went back to the top, so sorry about that. And Zero says that the more banes and boons that go be beyond simple stat adjustments, the better. I definitely agree with that. All right, so sorry, let me get back down here. All right, so there are a lot of great boons, but I think I'm going to stop there for now and go to the banes. I'm trying to ensure that I showcase the same amount of boons and banes, but again, I know that I will not be able to choose all of these. I'll have to choose what I think is the most important from the list or whatever list we end up with when the game is released. So another option, if she's a night owl, is solar aversion. This reduces critical result rolls during the day. Again, if she's a night owl, I could certainly see her being more sensitive to sunlight, and that could be enough to mess with her concentration while she's playing. Now, on the opposite side of boon companions is far too few. This reduces the effect that AOE abilities have if they are only uh, if they only affect a single target. This is certainly one that you have to choose which you like the better for. Just as a, the song could uplift one person even more than a crowd, it could have the opposite effect. When a crowd is cheering, singing along, or what have you, it could have, um, without, I'm sorry, without a crowd cheering, singing along, or what have you, it could have a lesser effect on a single person, and uh, one person by themselves may not suffer from uh, as much fear or whatever if they're by themselves, as opposed to being around other people who are also terrified by the music. Um, totally oblivious. Just about fits her perfectly. This reduces your detection. The reason it fits her so well is because she has this habit of walking around, playing to herself, or getting so wrapped up in her studies that the world around her simply disappears. So it would make sense that she would not be as alert as other people. And last but not least of the Banes that I think will fit her in character is Clumsy. This increases the wound uh, threshold against your attacks that enemies have, I, if I understand that right. Um, again, she's not much of a fighter, so any physical battle, battle would certainly not be in her favor. What's going on, Zero? All 
I know that this doesn't affect only the phys physical aspect of things, but that's how it would work in character for her. Oh, <laughs> Sornin, yeah, yeah, probably, probably. I'm sure they will, um, they're saying that I'm going to get ganked because of the low detection, uh, specifically by stealthers. So that's pretty much all that I have on the Banes or Boons. There are so many great options for both right now, and I'm certain that they'll only get better as, as the mechanics in the games are tweaked. Um, I am sorry that I wasn't able to go over all of them, but there are a lot. I hope that you go through the link and check it out for yourself, though. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the Banes and Boons as well. Um, if you have enjoyed what you heard, then please follow or subscribe below. And um, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great night. And as always, I'll stick around for a little bit in chat if anyone wants to chit-chat with me.